What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the Fade the Public podcast. I am Nicholas. That is Nikki Snacks. And below me is Mr. Maximus the Animal in a Tim Tebow jersey in which he pretended to have autographed by Tim Tebow. Stand up and show it to the crowd, please. I have a picture I can send to Scott. No, no, you're going to stand up and right show out. the crowd. Yeah, but that's like... I got to like... So there's a sit. No, you did it perfectly for me. That's perfect right there. That signature is not Tim Tebow's. <laughs> yes, it is. Go look it up. That's Animal's fucking signature. That is. I have seen you pull some pathetic stunts in the two years we've been doing this. That. That. No, listen. That's number that, one. That is the rock bottom. The I am a, was... I'm a sick bastard, and I have never done that with an Eli Manning jersey. Look, that the guy plan was to one frame it, you. frame it, and hang it up in my living room. So when visitors came over, they would be like, "Oh, sweet Tebow jersey." I'm like, "Yeah, it's fine." And like in the glass frame, they would never really be able to tell. But I fucked it up right away, so you. you but you tell keep telling that, everybody sure. that you fake signed it, so you've ruined the value. <laughs> game, game over now. Okay, well, listen up, listen up, wow. listen up. It's Cinco de Mayo, and I'm the only fucking real OG out here drinking a marg. Well, it's actually not Cinco de Mayo, Nick. It's uh, it's not a few days after Cinco de Mayo. Oh, you guys are watching this on May seventh, but we're recording. Up, I'll drink a mark from now until May seventh to make sure that that fucking <laughs> statement was accurate. Also, just uh, just trying to be fair. Reminder for the kids: uh, don't put squiggly straws in the dishwasher. They're not dishwasher friendly. They will come out looking like fucking animals' penis, and you can't really drink from it. Another PSA for the kids: don't smoke crap. <laughs> Love. Animal looked up like, what? We're not supposed to do that before we fucking film? Wait, we can't eat pancakes? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Lock it up. They're lock it up. Lock it, lock it up. No, you lock it up. You lock it up. Here's what we're doing today. We just finished our Go Fade Me Dynasty Rookie Draft. So a lot of y'all probably finish your rookie drafts or have your rookie drafts upcoming, which just would be a good little, little something for you. We're going to go through the rookie draft, and we're going to go mm, kind of pick by pick. We're going to just basically break apart the rookie draft that happened took place over a two or three day span for us four rounds and we're gonna look at the picks and also analyze it from a team standpoint like the people that made the picks and where those players kind of fit into their team and the structure behind it whether or not they were good picks and i could tell you now that like ev mo almost everybody's picks were just so bad like oh mine were really good <laughs> <laughs> mine were really good everybody else's were like so bad it was it, dude i nailed my draft i did so good dude you didn't even have to trade up for uh lamical p ryan like really good stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> was lamike in that value i don't even know how to say his name uh, to be honest if it's lamichael it, or... it's not it's really not gonna matter the guy's not gonna do anything frank gore's a new york jet now and he's probably gonna be a jet for three more years so that was that was my favorite update that i saw like within the last <laughs> month <laughs> that frank gore became a new Dude, york jet. i've been waiting for frank gore to sign i wish it wasn't the jets because i am such a frank gore homer i love him but i might have to attend the jets game this year if we're allowed to just to see frank gore play I would I would go out and a little tribute action to Frank Gore. He's he's one of my heroes. Yeah, he's a beast. Fuck Frank Gore. You guys Jack ready to get Tyler. into the, what the fuck? Why are you why are you starting shit with Frank Gore? I just don't want to talk about Frank Gore right now. I want to <laughs> talk about would you rather talk about No Sean Moreno. Let's talk about sex, no. baby. Let's talk about animals, virginity. All right, Scott, hit the intro. Okay, so you guys could probably hopefully see the board right now. I'm not sure what Flea Flicker is doing in, in, in the fact that they're not letting us see the board after we're done drafting. Travis, Here is some, uh, some prefacing facts. We need to drop some big facts for context for you to understand the league a little bit. So it's a 12-team league. We started it one year ago, so this is our first rookie draft. You'll see this guy, this fucking guy, Sexy Pats, has like Canadian 200 draft picks. A lot of them in the first round. That's because he basically threw the entire first year. Who made a trade? As, as, Shut up like it yeah. wasn't you. At, <laughs> tell me you just fucking put one through. No. I'm going to fucking. I'm, if I'm breaking not, the camera. If it's if you, you I'm, I'm, I swear. I swear it's not me. It's probably Yannick and someone oh, else. Oh, Sexy Pats. Oh. Oh. What? What? Whoa. What? What we got? This is a lot breaking news. Whoa. He traded Mahomes? Yeah. He, he offered me Mahomes. I said what no. What the fuck for a fifth, a third, six, and a fifth? 
He traded away a lot of his startup capital. He traded away a lot of his players to secure a lot of the rookie picks for this upcoming year, which is why he had the 101, the 102, the 105, the 107, uh, and like 30 other picks. So he had a lot of picks this year because he threw the first year. Let's start off the gate with that. The strategy itself, I completely understand if you do it well. And to his delight, he did do it well because he ended up with Clyde, Jonathan Taylor, did. Uh, Cam Akers, Tua as his quarterback, and a bunch of other picks, you know, Keyshawn Vaughn. So he, he put together a nice team after the draft. My problem with that is like, that's cool and all, but I can't imagine just sitting out an entire fantasy football year. You know what I mean? I understand it's dynasty, but I want to no, fucking compete right? every single year. This was Animalist was our first year doing it. It's all I just way too much of a risk for me. What if five of these guys are just dirt? Then he's looking at shit for quite a few years down the road. But I, to his credit, he did get high end talent. So kind of hard to completely knock it in real time right now. But going back towards last year, no way I could sit out a full year. No, not even like strategy. Yeah. Just like just a who I am. Like I'm a competitive fucking person. I don't want to join like this is one of my five leagues i don't want to sit out for a whole fucking year right and it, and it's yeah. to the point where I, I screwed up in our startup i thought i was getting picks for like this year and i was i was not it was like completely different i completely screwed up so then you're scrambling because you don't want to be you don't want to be a, a dumb bitch on the sideline just <gasps> watching everybody bulldoze everybody you know so you try and make shift stuff in, in your competitive nature and sexy pats no he just he sat back accumulated every loss loved every second of it so god bless i was just gonna say it's dedication on his part but well he's like 20 years old and he's canadian they have nothing to do so yeah the, the mindset's not, totally different up north there so different. whatever he's used to losing so what's one more year right all yeah. right so we had clyde go off the board 101 we had jonathan taylor right behind him so he gets both of those top two picks which is a fantastic little combo duo right there that he can insert straight into his lineup before then, who did he have at, at running back? I mean, he had nobody. So those were these are going to be his yeah, instant like Chase starters. Chase Edmonds. And, yeah. Um, so those guys become his instant starters. I don't necessarily know if I feel great about them in a redraft this year. Like, he did get a lot of studs. I, I don't really, honestly, looking at his team, I don't expect him to compete. He has a, a decent team. I don't in, I don't expect him to compete for anything more than like maybe that six seed for the playoffs. I don't think his running backs are powerful enough to get in there for redraft. Like next year though, his team will be fantastic. But this year, yeah. I I don't I, I see like a maybe sixth place, probably like seventh place finish. I I think he will. I think he'll get into the playoffs. I do. Um, probably in that sixth spot. His receivers and tight end. He's got Sutton, Ridley, Woods, Kittle. That's very strong yeah. right off the rip. And if he's getting high-end production from two of those three rookie backs and you get your steady production from Goff and Tannehill, I think he'll be in a fine situation because it's it's pretty top-heavy our league. So He's not making the playoffs. He still lacks depth to make it throughout a whole season. Wow. Pop it. I think he's, he's got plenty of depth at wide receiver because behind those guys, he has Gallup, Deontay Johnson, Anthony Miller, Brandon yeah. Cooks. That's it. Running back. There's only depth. Running back is no depth. I don't, I don't think depth is, is like no very depth. strong. Quarterback, he has way more here. depth than he has Goff, Tannehill, and Tua. As soon as Tua gets in the lineup, he's got three yeah. starting quarterbacks. Is Tua going to be in the lineup this year? I don't know if they plan on doing that. We'll By the time he needs depth, I'm sure Tua. They're not going to sit out Tua for well, the I'm entire I'm year. I'm talking about for this season to compete, it's not enough yet. Sexy Pats, not on playoff radar. I, I, I think he's no. I think he's right. And Nick was right. Six, seven spot. I think he's right on that hinge. I don't think the yeah. I don't think the running backs in their rookie year are there to give him that edge. But I think next year he'll be yeah. fine. So move on to the one hundred three where Scott somehow is like finagled his way to another forty two <laughs> picks. But he, unlike Sexy Pats, already had like a good roster to work with that comprised of Kenyon Drake, Cooper Cup, AJ Brown, Juju Smith Schuster, Mark Andrews. And uh, not to mention, we're in a super flex league with Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. Mm. Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. So he had a stud lineup, somehow ended up with the fucking 8,000 picks in this draft, too. He goes with J.K. Dobbins at the 103. No argument there. I know there were some, some chirping, some rumors through the grapevine that at that 103 pick, he was going to go with Joe Burrow. And I mean, that would have been madness. I'm okay with him going with it only because I knew he would be able to offload Joe Burrow. Cause he's, he's, I've never seen a guy trade like, like Scott before. Yeah. The dedication is very, very, very real. He, he's a very but impressive man. I think, I mean, listen, Scott had some questionable picks, I think, but this JK Dobbins pick at the three spot is his best pick of the draft. Maybe his second best pick. Cause there's a pick that he makes later in the first that is my absolute favorite. Oh I mean, he God. knew what he needed and he didn't <laughs> just go and take the bait and take the quarterback. So I don't think I don't think that's really 
too much to debate. In his spot, I would have I would have done the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I would have. Yeah, but Scott, I would have thought. No, he's editing this. About having Burrow and you know another young quarterback in, in a super flex where, if he really wanted to, could offload one of those three guys for a king's ransom. Yeah, if he wanted to. But I, I'm, I'm, I think he I, rounded out his roster really nice with J.K. Dobbins, and his clear weakness was was running back. So I thought it was an easy pick for him. He, yeah, he made the he made the right choice given his roster because he had Mahomes, he had Lamar Jackson. Yes, you're always looking for depth, but again, later on this round, he took Herbert. He got Herbert that was sitting there, which was a great pick by him. And yep. uh, I know Animal, that was the pick that you were saying was great later on in the first round. I, mean, I, I know you're not uh, referring to Jerry Judy, but and that pick disgusts me because he took that he took that son of a bitch Justin Herbert. Before Jerry Judy. That was a phenomenal and pick by him. I will jump in there too, Max. I'm with you. I think Herbert's the biggest bust since Ryan Leaf, even though they're really not drafted in the same category or talked about in the same category. I hate Justin Herbert. I hope he does well for you, Scott, but I hate him. But I think that's – what else was he going to do? He's going to take Jerry Judy over – Having a third quarterback like that, young on his roster, no. That he was, didn't that was need a, good a wide receiver. He has A.J. Brown, Juju, uh, Cooper Cup, and all these guys behind him. Tyler Boyd on his on his bench, and he still has all these other rookies that he took. You know, Judy, Michael Pittman. With his running backs, I mean, that was definitely a question mark. He didn't really have a solidified second starter. He has Kenyon Drake, who's going to be good for this year. We have no idea if Arizona's going to sign him next year. And if, if they aren't the ones that sign him next year, he can go to a shittier situation. He'll be 27, 28 years old, and that's, you know, yeah. the downfall of dynasty running backs. So he could have been in a, in a pinch quickly, but instead said he uh he makes some solid pick right there with jk who will be a phenomenal phenomenal dynasty asset in the year to come now cali dog cali dog is we want to talk about fucking trade machine we are oh, this league in itself has, has gone through 192 yeah. trades within the last year or so what is that's, that uh, you probably can't see it from there but that's all of cali dog's trades i've mapped them out that's all you know that's we're not in the we're not, not in, all of in them, the dungeon but... anymore you're allowed to clean it up no yeah, so actually, I wanted yeah, to talk yeah, about yeah, one of yeah, yeah. Cali Dog's trades here from his past where he traded Patrick Mahomes for a Mr. Dwayne Haskins, Chris Godwin, and the 1-4, which he ended up taking Joe Burrow with. And he also got the 21 second, but whatever. We don't know what that is yet. So what do you guys think about this, ending up with either Patrick Mahomes or would you like to have Haskins, Godwin, and Burrow and a 21 second? I mean, I'd rather have Mahomes. He's by far the best quarterback in football, and you know exactly what he is. You, we, I, we love Burrow as a prospect and think he could easily thrive. But I don't know. That's, I, I that's would, tough. I would, I would likely take the uh, again D- dynasty is very hard to to do things in a vacuum and with rankings and stuff because it's so team dependent depending on whether or not you need that depth I-, I think it's a toss-up like if you're a team that needs more depth i'm totally fine taking the deal on on burrow haskins godwin in the 20 21 second there um but of course it's patrick mahomes and he's a top three or four asset in super flex leagues for dynasty because he's going to be you know top for the next 10 years right and for yannick's team the, the trade does on paper make sense because like you said the depth reasons he wasn't going to compete so to get to get a, a burrow a, a haskins who's a, another starting quarterback and a, a top flight wide receiver is not the uh not the worst thing in the world right so burrow goes off 104 we have cam Akers 105 deandre swift 106 so so scott pairs up dobbins with swift to kind of shore up his running backs of the future again the question mark for this year same thing with you know Clyde Edwards Hilaire and Jonathan Taylor is how much of a committee are those rookie running backs in off the rip and this year you know we might not see all that value come to fruition but by next year those will be fantastic picks sexy pats gets to to get to pair uh Clyde and Jonathan Taylor with Cam Akers and then after that this is where it gets kind of interesting I actually was in uh really really close discussions with Scott to trade up to that 106 and I was going to take Tua there I don't remember the wow. exact deals. It was a lot of it was a lot of capital though. I knew I would have had to give him I think a first next year, maybe the 24 and the 229, two something like that. Ooh. So it was three picks that's, to move up. That's a beast. So I'm I'm in a tough spot with my roster because one, I don't, you know, like if if I don't know if anyone's realized this, but my entire season is banking on the fact that Cam ends up as somewhere with the starter. Yes. Because if I don't get no. that, if that doesn't happen, I don't even have a second quarterback, really, unless unless Tua sits for a long <laughs> time and I could ride, ride Fitzpatrick. But behind Russell Wilson, I have almost no depth. So I almost went to 
take that deal just so I can have Russ and Tua kind of like fucking the same player together, but just 10 years younger and kind of have that paired up. But then I'm looking at the rest of my team and I'm like, do I want to give up the two, four, the two, nine, you know, all those picks, because I also need depth behind like Julio Jones. I need wide receiver depth. So I ultimately, I ultimately decided against it uh, because of, I had an offer for you. I had an offer for you for Julio to give you some, some, some youth. Yeah, but it didn't help my quarterback situation at all. Let's talk about that. So you offered me mid-draft. What'd you offer me? Essentially, it was Amari Cooper, and you were what two four mm-hmm. for Julio. And it was a, Julio and your two four for Amari Cooper and my like three eleven. Yeah. So I asked myself, would I rather have Julio and T Higgins, or Julio and whoever I took at the two four, or would I rather have Amari Cooper? Because whoever you're getting at three eleven is pretty much shit, right? So <laughs> yeah. looking at my team again. <laughs> Looking at my team again, again, I needed wide receiver depth because behind Julio, it's like it's I have Julio, I have Terry McLaurin, and then it's like Julian Edelman, Sammy Watkins, and guys that will get me through this year. But I needed the depth bad. Like I could, I can't grab Tua, give away all those picks, and not have anything for the future. You know, it's a win now. And you said you keep saying depth, depth, and youth because outside of Terry, you got Julio who's like thirty, Edelman who's like forty two. So I, I think I think you were probably in the right there, Max. I would have said no to you in, in a heartbeat. I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought about it for yeah. a second just because Amari is still 25 and Julio's 31. But my that's why my yeah. problem with Amari. Yeah, I know it, it made sense, but Amari's just like it, had you offered me that a week ago before they drafted CD Lamb, well, I would have fucking yeah. smashed that yep. in a second. But you waited until yeah. after it, and now it's like I, I'm someone who believes CD is is like going to be a top eight top six fantasy wide receiver within the next few years. So I think by the time, you know, Julio is like retired and Amari's hitting his 27 years old, he's going to be like a wide receiver too, maybe in fantasy. So I'm like, let me just ride what I have in Julio for the next year or two as a wide receiver one and whatever. So I stuck it out and I ended up getting T Higgins, LaVisca Chanel and Brian Edwards. And I'm hoping, you know, one, if not two of those can hit, one of them could take like 80% of the production from uh, Julio type and then fill my lineup for the next few years to come. So I stayed pat. I needed... Uh, the depth a little bit, and I didn't end up trading up for Tua. So, so captain goes with DeAndre Swift. I believe Sexy Pats actually traded up from the 108 to the 107 he did. to make yes. sure he got Tua, right? He did. Yes, he did. Okay, so he got Tua there. So to secure another another quarterback, good pick. Then Cali Dog gets CD Lamb. I know how bad. I think I, he'll have to comment on this situation. I'm, I, I know he wanted to trade this pick away so bad because he just wants to trade every single pick away so bad. <laughs> At one point, I was just like, just take CD Lamb and enjoy a good fantasy player. And he's like, yeah, that's yeah. that's what I'm gonna do. I guarantee you, like that one text message <clears> I sent him was like the trigger that made him actually draft CD Lamb. So CD yeah. at 108, I mean, fuck, that's stealing, man. Can't really go wrong. He pairs him with Burrow. I think he, I think he started off really hot, Yannick. So I'm, I couldn't be more happy. I think Yannick is my favorite player in our in our league. Just simple fact, he cares so much, and he sends the most ridiculous trade offers. That when he starts hitting on everything and he's having a a good streak, you can't feel anything but but happiness for him so I disagree um home run, home run at 1a i cd was the only pick right there so good for him so he's got a nice stack of young wide receivers i want judy but he's got a nice stack no, of young I, wide I receivers yeah that. definitely not go with judy over cd lamb anyone out there that hasn't had the rookie drafts yet he's got godwin dj chark cd lamb also pairing that up with jalen rager a couple picks later henry ruggs like do you think that before rugs i know we're like kind of going pick by pick but we're on yannick right now yeah, go for it you think instead of Ruggs, he should have taken Vaughn? If he's taking, you know, he took CD, he's got another pick at 2-1 where he could get a Rager or a Mims or Higgins or Pittman or somebody, but his running backs were kind of lacking after, you know, outside of Jacobs. So would have Vaughn have been a better pick uh, over Ruggs at 112? That was the one thing I wrote down. I, I might have He had that. the 112 and the 2-1, so he could right. have taken Vaughn. Yeah, he could, he or, had. Or, or either way, right, exactly. I'm saying, like, would you have taken instead of Instead of both taking, put Vaughn in one of those spots. Yeah, he had a lot of holes to fill in his lineup, so he went with Joe Burrow, 104. I think he needed a hole, he needed help at quarterback, he needed help at running back. He ended up getting a lot of wide receiver youth, but skipping on running back was questionable. Henry Ruggs just seems to be one of those guys that like people don't take at value. You either like him or you don't. And Yannick is, yeah. a, a, you know, he's a Raider. He's fan, from so Cal. Like- yeah, he's a Raider fan, so it seems like the Ruggs fit was kind of natural for him to go there. I am a little bit surprised that he didn't go with Vaughn at the at the uh, at the two one. He went with Rager. I think he likes Rager because he's in love with Noah and he sends him like <laughs> like finger me text messages at three in the morning and and 
And and Noah loves Rager. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You, Yannick, you backstabbing son of a bitch! I thought I was the only one that got those. No, we all get them. He'll he'll send them. He'll, he just puts out, you know, just plant the seeds and see what grows from it. He wants finger me texts from from anyone you can get it. From. Anybody that will, yeah, anybody that will I'll, take I'll them. send you asshole pics. <laughs> <laughs> that was one thing that that really jumped out to me um, when reviewing everything. Uh, then he went rugs Rager back to back. I get it, the rugs and and he the rugs. drafted and I, like I, the Raiders. Because, he just went wide receiver <laughs> yeah. heavy. He did and I, I would have went Vaughn with one of those picks there. I guess he wanted rugs because he picked him for Rager. He, either way, it doesn't matter. I think to to kind of solidify that that RB two rollout set behind Jacobs. I think it would have been a home run. You get Lamb, Rugs, Vaughn to pair with Jacobs, Burrow. Well, so if, like, let's just let's just stay on Yannick here for a second because. We haven't moved off. Him. We're we're ripping him for not taking a running back there. But what if he just doesn't like Vaughn and That's he fine. believes he could get AJ Dillon later, like he did, and he got Zach Moss. So like he did address his running back. No, he didn't though. He doesn't yeah. have a running back I mean, too right now in his lineup. And that, not for this year, probably point. not. No. Okay. But for Dynasty for the future, AJ Dillon will be getting fucking carries, man. Okay, but is he gonna be? Is he gonna be the workhorse? Yes. Okay. Oh, he is. Okay. So now, yes. yeah. So now he does. I mean, he's still Yannick's team still has a lot of holes in in there to to fill up. So, despite a lot of the draft capital, he's got a lot of young, like interesting pieces there that he'll end up being able to move probably. But I I don't see him yeah. putting fucking scotch tape together and fixing all these holes to make sure that his uh that his roster competes for the playoffs. So Yannick, you're going to be sitting in the fucking bottom feeder section for the next year again. So not a bad thing, Yannick. You're he's, young. You're healthy. You're good. Don't worry. He's going to make some trades. He'll, he'll trust me. He's not done. Obviously, he's by not the done. time you see this video, people, this his roster will be different. Yeah, one hundred percent. So uh, Scott comes on the board, has the one nine and one ten, gets Herbert. So he passes on getting another quarterback there. He goes Dobbins Swift early on, which I like the move. Gets Herbert at the one oh nine. And as much as you don't like Herbert, like it doesn't matter. You just need a starting quarterback in the NFL and the value of them just shoots right the fuck up. As soon as he has one good game or just stays on the field for like six straight games, he's considered a starting quarterback in the NFL. I have a um a question or something I want to bring up that Scott mentioned actually in our uh, group me chat during the draft when he was thinking about drafting Swift. He's in five other he's in four other dynasty leagues. So he said he's got Swift in four out of the five. So this would make it five out of five. Mm -hmm. I told him you should draft someone else, do something else, diversify the revenue. I was just going to say, isn't there a line? That? Isn't there a line in there somewhere? That's like our fucking credo. Was, yeah. So I was going to say, what do you think about him going that heavy on him in all of his dynasty leagues? Uh, redraft, you draft a guy at whatever, the dynasty. I don't know. He put himself in, like he put himself in a weird spot here because he has Mahomes and, and Lamar Jack. I, if I were him, I, uh, I probably would have diversified and went CD, CD there at the 106 if I've actually drafted Swift four times out of five already, and this was the fifth time. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely yeah. someone who likes to diversify, but I don't know. Like Swift, I think based on his roster, that, that wasn't a bad move. I think it was actually the right one. No, yeah, it, maybe was, in it was. Some of his other leagues, he probably should have not went. With okay, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to tell. How, you don't know how the board shakes up in this one. He might have know. Done, already done those before. So I just wanted to bring that up because he mentioned it in the group me chat. So no, it's a it's a good point. I think there is definitely some real tangible advice there when you're drafting a lot of the same players because listen, like we're all going to get a bunch of shit wrong, and if you really really like a guy that ends up busting. He's gonna kill all of your teams if you end up, you know, like, taking him. Right. He could have went Tua there, yeah, and then not taking Herbert. But that's what, what I mean. But he had, him. but he had, he has Mahomes and Lamar, and he also has like Juju and all this young wide receiver talent on his roster. So it's like it's hard to when he doesn't have a lot of running back depth. It's hard to justify taking one of those guys when your future is is kind of in jeopardy at the running back position. So it is a, it is a tough situation, but realistically, yeah, I like to diversify as, I, as much as I can. And I would usually, uh, in that situation, if I were Scott, if I really took Swift four out of four, I, I would have pivoted to CD, I think, or Tua. DeAndre Swift is my running back one. I would have went Tua. And then two or more, two you know, or more likely, just based because on. Because then you don't have to draft Herbert. You can draft your, you know, you can get Judy and then Jefferson or Ruggs or, you know, whoever you want there. And then instead of taking Pittman later, he could have reached on uh, Gibson a little bit there at 2-5. Oh, oh. I like Gibson. I just said it probably wouldn't even be a reach. All right, so it's not, we, it's not uh, even a reach. we rounded out the first round. Herbert, Judy, Jeff, Jefferson, Henry Ruggs. Worst pick of the draft by far is George picking Justin Jefferson at 111 and then following it up with the second worst pick of the draft at 2-3 with Denzel <laughs> Mims. That's all we'll say about George, the Cleveland fan, in this one. Jalen Rager is the first pick off the board in the second round. Keyshawn Vaughn. 
second pick off the board, uh, Mims, Higgins, Pittman. Anything uh, off the in the in the first? Let, let's talk about Jordan Love at the two hundred six. Thoughts? Yeah, I would love to. Thoughts? Um, back back I to Yannick. I knew you I, I liked it, it, Snacks. I was curious as to I why. Did because I was going to take him at two eight because I I have two quarterbacks rostered right now, and I know he's not playing maybe for maybe for two or three years, but I think Lafleur and. It's true. There could be a whole regime change by the time Jordan Love even sees the field yeah. with Rodgers' contract and all. But I think there's definitely serious friction, and Love gets on the field quicker than people think. Yeah. So to get that starting quarterback that this regime put their ass on the line yeah. for, I was going to take that chance at 2-8. So in that sense, I like it. For Yannick, I don't know if I would have double-dipped on Burrow and Love. But from where I was sitting in my standpoint, I I, I like Love. I like I kind of like the landing spot. I think he's in there before people, before people think, or, or sooner than people think. And um, if he fell to me at the two seven. I would have considered pulling the trigger on him. Yeah, there was there was two guys that I that I was I was completely eyeing, and I got the other one I wasn't. So love love was him. Yeah, and, uh, um, I, I'm I'm totally in agreement with you there. Where there's smoke, there's fire, and all this nonsense coming out with Rogers, like there's something going on behind the scenes, and that doesn't. You know, we usually don't see that just last for three fucking years. Uh, right. Worst case scenario is that Jordan Love is starting in two or three years, and that makes him, you know, a perfect taxi squad also uh, eligible player because yeah. you're not going to have to use a roster spot knowing that he's not even going to see the field for a couple of years. Right, exactly, yeah. and you're taking him in the middle of the second round, so it's not a heavy, heavy investment, especially when you had three first-round picks before that. So I, I, for his roster, maybe not, but from, like, where I was or Max, like you said, 2-7 – I think it. I would have been perfectly okay, and if he was there to it, I would have hit. I would have drafted in two seconds. I also so. want to go on the record. My first pick was at two hundred four, and I panicked and I took Higgins over Pittman, and I, I was, will. I will forever regret not taking Pittman over Higgins. Nah, I'm telling you, it's a great pick. That makes me feel so much worse, Animal. <laughs> it makes I know. me feel so much worse. Here's Pittman, and Pittman gets away from the defender Harper. Stiff arms the defender, just mauls him. Takes a shot downfield, looks for Pittman, who makes a catch in Notre Dame territory. He beat Bracey. Throws middle, caught by Pittman. To the 20, to the 15, he gets to the corner. Touchdown, USC. I'm not sure this guy's not the best receiver in the draft. I mean, that's how strongly I felt. Nick, I am in agreement with you. I would have went Pittman over Higgins in a heartbeat. I also would have taken Pittman over Denzel Mims at 2-3. See, now, do you guys feel that way only because – well, yeah, I agree with Mims – do you feel that way only because you watched those hype videos of the Colts and how much they loved him? Hey, Vincent Jackson, like. Every time I watch him, I like him better. He's a build-up speed guy. He can finish on the deep ball. He wins 50-50 battles. He can win deep, he can separate, he can get the tough yards. He's a guy that kind of plays above the rim. He kind of brings an element that we were missing. Here's my issue, and I want to tell you, tell you what I'm thinking here. What I'm thinking here Here's is... Papa Animal. T. Higgins has... A quarterback he's paired up with for the next, you know, 10 years, hopefully. But, you know, you would think with Joe Burrow there. Ass That's ain't the plan. Playing in, the in Cincinnati for 10 years. <laughs> right. Well, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mouth. Four years, five years, he's got a quarterback. Pittman's got Phil Rivers this year, which does not entice me. And then probably next year, who knows? Does Jacoby Brissett fill in? Is it Jacob Easton time? Like, who's the quarterback there? Who's throwing the ball to Pittman? This it's his it's, dynasty. It's, it's, I agree. Give and it's, me <laughs> T. Higgins. Okay, it's a very good point. I Great once point. once we're into that second round, and uh, you know it's still early or whatnot. I'm gonna take you know what the teams think of their player into mind, and the way they loved Pittman, and the way they've been looking for a big body receiver on the outside yep. is something that I really really like. I think the Colts are as smart of a front office as there is in football. Maybe you know the Ravens, maybe one. They're gonna get that quarterback situation figured out, and shit, maybe even luck comes back. I'm not gonna totally disagree because I do get the whole quarterback thing, but I'm going to give them my confidence in finding their fixture at quarterback and Pittman reaching his potential for something that they really wanted and that they craved. Yeah, Indy's just got a good infrastructure there that you figure, you, you know, you're promising that they're going to probably figure it out, the quarterback position. In my opinion, it had nothing to do with the hype tape. T to be completely honest with you, I haven't even seen the video that you're referring to about it's Michael good. Pittman. I, it's good. I've heard it's really hey, good. Hey, had no effect They talk on about me. Pittman like I talk about the Giants. The competitiveness, the toughness. Who else do I like better than this guy for our team? And, and I and I struggled. I struggled to answer that question. I, I love this guy. 
by this guy. I mean, it's, all that needs to be said is that they they literally told you by the draft that they think Michael Pittman is more important to their offense than Jonathan Taylor is. They took him fucking eight picks earlier. So that tells you what you need to know. Pittman was a guy that like, I mean, I've been doing dynasty videos now for like four months already. So Pittman was like a top 10, if not like top eight dynasty wide receiver back in March when we first started putting out content. And that was, you know, not a popular opinion at the time. And at the same time, I was one, I was someone that did not like T Higgins when I watched him play. We talked about this a couple of days ago. I see him way more like a Mike Williams type than people comparing him to like AJ Green. The guy has like very, very little yak ability. I understand that he's like athletic and he can get up and get the ball. He, he doesn't right. move well with the ball in his hands, which it, it's nice to have a floor. You know, it's nice to have a floor like that. He could be a Mike Williams type, and I think that's probably the most likely outcome. But I, I see Mike Michael Pittman as someone that has much higher of a ceiling, especially in an offense where like T.Y. might be gone next year, right? So Pittman has a, like his ceiling could be taking over as the alpha. And T. Higgins can do yeah. that too, but I think Tyler Boyd is very good and he'll be there for the next three years. Like, I, I'm not saying Pittman is like, you know, the, the second coming of Calvin Johnson or something, but there's not a lot of mouths to feed there in the passing no. game. They didn't throw the ball a lot last year, but that's not to say they won't in the future, especially with Phil like, this year. Who are their weapons? I think he can who come in weapons? right away and produce. Who are their weapons in Indy? Um, Marlon Mack. T.Y.? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Animal, I'll be honest with you. I feel like that's low-key. Like, you might actually win that bet. I feel like Marlon Mack might be turned into the scat back this year. I'm telling you, that's what they're going to do. Because they, get, they're just going to they're 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 send him off next year, and that's it. So, well, he can it, catch passes. They just haven't had him do it. Indy's going to have T.Y. gone. I mean, Eric Lee Brown's not there anymore. They don't have a fucking... Devin Funches is not there, nor was he really ever there. Paris Campbell... Marvin Harrison's been gone for a decade. <laughs> yeah. they, he's He steps right in. He does, he, he does. Right and that's in. what makes me nervous. He's in, he's in a perfect, ideal situation. And like I was talking about before, you reiterated it. I'm banking on that front office getting it right at quarterback. So I think it was a great pick by Scott. And um, I know we were talking about like steals and busts and whatnot. We haven't really got into that. Maybe we will later. But to me... And maybe it's not a steal because this is where he's kind of projected to go and whatnot. But I would have taken him over two guys in front of him. So I think Scott, I think that was a Scott's best pick value wise. So and pissed about it. Um, yeah, yeah, I know you are. You said it right away, too. That's why I was a little. Yeah, this will forever haunt me. I can't wait to make videos in three years and just like keep replaying clips of this shit over and over again. An animal being like, it's T Higgins, bro. <laughs> T Higgins is like fucking I'm telling you it's a great pick. That makes me feel so much worse. They're not picking up his second, his fucking fifth round. Animal option. was trying to trade back into the fifth round. And we don't even have a fifth round. So, <laughs> yeah. So then we have the, the second half of the second round. Uh, I don't think anything really stood off the board. We have animal goes a brand <laughs> at the two seven. Uh, Snacks gets Gibson at the 2-8. LaVisca Chenault, 2-9. Zach Moss, 2-10. I took uh, hey. AMC, my fucking boy, at the 2. I had two rookie drafts that same day. Had the 2 pick in both of them and went with Anthony McFarland. because I just lose every fucking championship game. And uh, I took Anthony McFarland at the 2 in, in both drafts. Are you okay, Animal? And are you okay, Snacks? We're just, What's going are on? Are we just glossing over the fact that I had a pick at the 2-7 and that's it? We're just not going to talk about it? I just said, like, did anything? Was there anything surprising on the board? I mean, not. Su I mean, he fell. I mean, that's great value he for. Fell. Right? Like, like that's that, exactly that, where he goes in every draft. That's, that is <laughs> yeah. great value, first of all. Great value and for a. Where, where, about, where, where would you have talking drafted? about in front of who? Just, probably because Mims. if he fe if he fell, definitely would have taken him before Mims. You're talking about he's going to have production. No, I'm talking about Ayuk. He is going to be plugged in right away to the offense on the field day one. First round draft capital, Kyle Shanahan. Team wait, is the, ready to the go. Jets, the Jets have Brashad Perriman at wide receiver and and Cratter in the slot. Why isn't Mims going to get every opportunity he's as well? He's still too raw. He's, he's going to get opportunity, but I don't think he's going to produce fantasy wise. And I get Look it. Look at Nick. A, Look at Nick just tuning out of our conversation. <laughs> no, right. not I'm true. To talk. I'm why listening. Can't we, why can't we hold it? Are you scared? Tune it out. Snack got it. his finger on the thing. This is a mess. You know what? <laughs> There was nothing no a mess. There's, you're making it a mess. I wanted to no, well, I listen. Just, we can't go pick by pick into the second, third, and fourth round. This will take all day. I thought it would be good to go through the first round and we we dove yes. into analysis. We, you think I'm favoring my picks? I didn't have a single fucking first round pick over here, animal. No, all I'm he, talking all about said, all he said was my he pick. pick, and he got his boy McFarland. That was it. Yeah, and then Chase Claypool at two twelve goes to Devin's Bush, who's a Steelers fan and thinks everything that fucking touches yellow and black is the next coming of Jesus. <laughs> so Chase Claypool, whatever. I do I do have to respect that it was the Steelers who went up, got a wide receiver in the second round they do say he's going to play outside what do you think uh let's talk about chase claypool he's a he's a hashtag freak athlete gonna play outside didn't like him in college really i don't think he'll succeed on the outside to be honest with you i don't think he separates well but i think it's good for 
Deontay Johnson if they can get a, a legit another outside wide receiver and moving Juju back into the slot. Great for Thank Juju. God. Huge yeah. for Juju. Huge for Juju to Free get. Free Juju. Free Juju. Free Juju animal. Animal. Look at you just tuning out while I'm talking. So disrespectful. Yeah. I, I will my, say, um... I, I think Chase Claypool fell into the perfect situation. The way those Steelers breed them wide receivers over there. That's the only, there. only landing spot he could have fell into that would make him the 212 in rookie draft. Right. For real. Right. Maybe going to the Broncos. Everywhere, everywhere you saw him, he was going third. So, it just, I mean, 212, it, it's right there. But there's nothing to hate about it. I like what they do in Pittsburgh. Antonio Brown, Juju, Sanders, all these guys. They, they just produce wide receivers. So, great landing spot for him. And it just so happens he's a Steeler. So, good for you, Devin's Bush. Yeah, so we have Cali Dog. We were talking about before, has a ton of wide receiver depth now or a ton of young wide receivers after going with CD, Jalen Rager, all those guys. He ends up going with Zach Moss at the end of the second. He gets A.J. Dillon in the third as well as Darrington Evans. So he gets all those like mid-tier guys that you know combine a little bit of a ceiling with a little bit of a floor. Hopefully one will pop off for him. So I kind of like the depth that he grabbed there at running back. But Snacks, you made an interesting pick here. 302, Jalen Hurts. Talk about it. Yes, I did. Um, it was not – I wasn't sure if he would keep falling back. Keep falling back. This is probably around where – uh, actually, probably a little bit earlier than where he's going. But my, my quarterback situation is depleted. Uh, I look at the Eagles. I look at Carson Wentz, and the guy is made of glass, literally. Uh, he's 20 times bigger than me, but I can guarantee you I could last more than he can on a football field. 100%. Easily. We have the same hair color. So you could compare me to Carson Wentz. I'd be on the field more than Carson Wentz was. He is He's like an injury away from possibly being out of there. And you don't spend a second-round pick on a quarterback like Jalen Hurts if you don't have plans for him, or if you're not worried about your current quarterback situation's health. So to get my, I guess, QB3 now, he could sit. Maybe he goes on tax squad. I'm not sure yet. But I, I really wanted Jalen Hurts. I was the worst possible fucking landing spot. The worst, by far. Maybe not the worst. But it was bad. You had to run it, your it, was, it was a bad spot, but I like Jalen Hurts, the prospect. And at 3-2, needing a quarterback with his skill set and – with Doug Peterson and their innovative offense, I was I was intrigued. So I, I went with them. Um, it's the three Animal, two. It's what do you not got over there? You look like you got a fucking so. devious look in you. Uh, he just ran. Animal, I think I think you like the pick. I like the pick. I was going to say not to tell you how to run your team. I would definitely put him on your taxi squad. I know. Really? You don't think he's starting this year, Animal? So two picks later, the three hundred four. I didn't have the three hundred four, but I decided to trade up from the three hundred nine to the three hundred four. I uh, had Jalen Hurts fell there. I definitely would have taken Jalen Hurts, but I saw Brian Edwards on the board there, still at 304. And again, I needed wide receiver wide receiver depth. Uh, I got T. Higgins. I got LaVisca Chenault. And I said, why the fuck not? I think Brian Edwards is in a... I mean, you look at the remaining wide receivers on the board, and I think Brian Edwards is a tier, if not two tiers above all of the ones that are remaining there. Um, so, not all. So I went up, yeah, easily all, if not fucking every single one left in the free no, agency No, li- well. literally not all. But go ahead, continue. This is a very good pick, so I'll let you go. Are you going to... Like honestly, all the wide receivers that you took afterwards are probably four tiers below Brian Edwards. So I wouldn't say four, but no. let's talk about trading and trading up because I trade basically what I gave was the three hundred nine to get the three hundred four, and I gave up next year's third round pick, and it was my third round pick, and I'm of the thought that I was in the championship last year. So best case scenario or worst case scenario for me is that I gave up. You know, maybe like I get the sixth seed or the fifth seed or something. So it's you know the three zero. Uh, the 307 or 308 and I'm okay doing that to trade up for Look that. yeah I'm, I'm okay this is usually I think in rookie drafts this was a deep draft too with the guys that you a lot of guys that you like usually by like halfway through the third round you're kind of slim pickings from guys that are kind of like shitty and not really going to help your team but this year like even if you got the 308 or the 310 like you're pretty excited about those picks you still see guys that you like on the board so when you're trading if you're trying to move up in a round usually what it takes is like uh, you swap a pick that you have later on in that round and then like a future the next season or like I could have probably given him the 309 and maybe like the 42 or the 43 or something like that or a future fourth or third or something like that so put a little extra sauce on top move back a few picks just like the real NFL draft so that's what it took to get up there Brian Edwards snacks you you had I mean you fucking own the third round I did I had a lot of picks in the third round you were just saying there was this draft was actually pretty pretty deep so when I when I realized I had all these third rounders I was you know, it's nothing special. You're gonna, it's gonna have to hope and pray, knock on wood. But there were some guys that I, I really liked, and I, I traded up for for Devin uh, Duvernay. That's where I went. Well, I guess I took DJ Dallas before him. And the simple reason, I, go ahead. No, nothing. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, no, no. Okay, good. 
Um, I took I took Dallas, even though I hate his last name. I hate the city. I hate the state. But I love the landing spot in Seattle. I, I know that they're thinking about bringing Marshawn Lynch back, but that doesn't matter. I'm not expecting much from him his rookie season anyway. He's got Rashad Penny in that backfield who's coming off of a blown-out knee like I blew out my knee this weekend walking 50,000 steps. Humble brag. Chris Carson, is he's a walking medical tent too, and he's, he's got a fumble problem. So I thought his landing spot was really good. And for a, a running back needy team, I thought that was a very good spot for him and for me to take him. So I took I took that upside there, and then I, I traded up from, I guess, three – I don't even – Animal, what was my trade? I think I traded – I don't up. know. It was, this is the part that, that was miserable because – you guys, you, you traded, were trying you made, desperately. No, no, because you made two trades with the same person that you could have just made with one trade, and instead you did two trades yeah, right. over like three yeah, hours well, instead of. I don't, I don't like saying that because I moved up to get Duvernay, who is going into that slot position. You would think, you think uh, Hollywood goes outside for Baltimore, and he's and Duvernay slides into the slot role, where I know there's not, there was not many targets there. But to have no competition and stepping into that role potentially, right. I like, here's what happened. I like Duvernay. That's that's uh that's one of those picks where at the end of the third round, like on a typical year, you're not excited about it, but you still like Duvernay. Right. I like the upside. I like the upside there. So I I moved up to get him, and then I I, I traded like three seven to get Marvin Jones, a veteran receiver, because there was nobody that I, I was just clamoring for. So I, I wasn't mad adding a veteran. You traded receiver. the three seven to Devin's Bush for Marvin Jones. And then you traded. No, no, no. That was after. Yeah, no. You just so yeah. You traded Sterling Shepard for the three six, and then you traded the three seven. <laughs> you traded Marvin Jones for the three. You traded the three seven to get Marvin Jones. Those are the same person. You could have all been well done in one trade. But well, I they didn't, were. I didn't, I didn't know at the time. I didn't know. Like an hour about. apart. Yeah, animal. That really got you. And I know what made you. The only reason that this stuck out to you is because you were sitting there at the 311 wanting Adam Troutman so bad, and this just took a while he for won. that to happen. 100% wanted Adam Troutman. No, I don't even – dude, I don't draft tight end. Stop it. I wanted Van Jefferson. I was trying to Hold trade up for him. Before we continue, I have a question for you, Animal. I really want to put you on the spot. Okay. Because it's been bothering me. No, we're not talking about that. What do you think I'm going to bring up? You're going to try and talk about the trade. No, I'm not talking about any trade. All right. I want to know why you have clamored so many times on this podcast in, a, in our text messaging group that you don't give a shit about rookie picks. You don't care about any of that. You give me the proven guy, blah, 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 blah. When you were literally crying about not being able to tr trade up for a guy you in the guy, third round. So you see I'm, a guy I'm, you like, you try and trade up for him. I'm, I'm in draft mode. I can't, I can't try and trade up for a guy I like now. Okay, so what about the Rojo trade? Can you get us through that? I, I'm very curious to hear your plan and why you'd made that Wait, trade. What did you give up for I'm Rojo again? I'm hoping he becomes an RB2. What did you give up for Rojo again? I traded the 2-5 and the 3-1 for Rojo and the 4-2. To me, that's an awful trade. That's so and the 2-5 turned into Michael Pittman. Pittman. I would so take Pittman over Rojo had... straight up, without a and doubt. The week. Yes, but I also ended up getting Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk. So Nothing to do you know, with that trade, though. <laughs> Nothing to do with that trade. I can't believe well, that you're I end still up getting back, myself like, a two seven. I can't believe you have got you have got you have tipped the scale so many different times. I have no idea what to expect from you anymore. Listen, that I wrote, that Rojo, Rojo trade, this year. I thought the Rojo trade was getting like like I, we were gonna find a message in the group me saying, "Whoa, whoa, whoa I'm sorry, I didn't mean to accept. Can you guys redo that?" <laughs> I, Listen, I'm sorry. Guys, We'll see what happens. I, I have faith in Rojo this year. I think he's going to uh, be an RB2, so that's all I need. That's all I'm asking for him. Just not a good trade. It's not a I good trade. All right. So, for my team, it worked. So, so we have Josh Kelly, KJ Hamler, Adam Troutman, the first tight end off the board there at 3-9, Lynn Bowden, Van Jefferson, Tyler Johnson. Animal, would you like to sit here and talk about Van Jefferson again so we don't hurt your feelings? <laughs> Yeah, because he fell, he fell to I him at 311. It's, uh, he fell to it's, a, him. it's a great pick. Fell to me at the 311. I would have traded up for him probably at the 3-5. After Edwards was gone, this is my next wide receiver I would have liked to take. Yeah, it's a great pick at the 311. He's going to be a year two starter. Probably slide in and take Robert Woods' spot next year. So, yeah, I'll take that guy. Played all three spots in college. Yeah, I'll take so he's that. he's going to take Rob. So, Woods is gone. Cooper Cup's gone. They're just Van Jefferson out. No, Cooper Cup will be there. Van Jefferson will be taking that. He could even fucking take Josh Reynolds' spot this year. Watch out. You don't know. So, Alpha Elite don't know. Van Jefferson. I like it. You like it. You like I didn't that hate pick. it. At the 311, that's a pretty good pick, to be honest with you, considering yeah. the draft capital involved. 
Tyler Johnson to young Codeine, Jacob Eason. Uh, Animal had back-to-back just brutal picks here. Antonio Gandy Dude, Golden. Waiting for these and picks. Michael P Ryan, just so bad, just so so. You know, bad. I think you know what I think. I you know your team is in flux, no chance of competing for like years to come when you are craving and then gloating about fourth round selections. Michael well, P Ryan might be the listen, worst running back I've ever their seen. Dart throws, but of course they're, Antonio, they're all Antonio. They're like two seven. They're all dart throws. Antonio Gandy Golden is going to be on the Redskins roster, competing for the wide receiver three, maybe even the wide receiver two spot. So What does that mean? Nothing me matters that. behind Terry. But right. if he's the next guy behind Terry, that's a great pick in the, at the 4-2. But he's not going to. Uh, no. Michael Antonio, P. Ryan, Antonio Gibson's going to get like six targets a game, so it doesn't matter. I'm throwing a, a, throwing a dart on a possible running back that could get some carries in the NFL. That's all that is. I'm not uh, really expecting him to take and then, over. But and then I think easily the worst pick of the draft was Devin's Bush going with Jawan Jennings here and explaining <laughs> it to us that – if Jimmy G goes down, he could step in as the quarterback. So he's drafting a hor- he's drafting a horrible wide receiver on the basis that his quarterback, his starting quarterback, gets gets hurt. Won't be on the roster come September whenever the game starts. I can fifty dollar bet we already put down on it. I like uh, I like Scott getting Cole Komet here at the four seven. The first uh, the first tight end, even if you don't like him, the first tight end that was drafted in the NFL draft. Good value down there. Then we uh, rounded out the draft with Donovan Peoples Jones at the four eight, Colin Johnson, Eno Benjamin. I took Albert O at four eleven, and then Isaiah Hodgins. Great fucking pick. So what do you do? You think Albert O like? I mean, I, I like him. He was like such a, a guy I really liked in the pre-draft process, and then he went out and killed the combine, and now he's just like a worse version almost of Noah Fant. But yeah. but Albert O and Drew Locke played college ball together, and they had like some really really good years together. So I'm hoping that like something there fucking transfers over. I don't know. I just don't ever see it being fantasy, like the value being yeah. for fantasy. Like I could see him having like those like ten touchdown seasons, but like fucking like two targets a game. Like you know, like he just has like four yards, one touchdown. So you're gonna, so ten, you're telling me my fucking touchdown. <laughs> you're telling me my four eleven is gonna ride up a couple of double digit tugs. Are you not, insane? Not fucking like what I'm saying is that it could be like in the future, you know. Like a eight touchdown year, but like they were all fucking four yard touchdowns on the goal line. He, like, Albert O runs fucking... like a fucking four three forty. He's like a fucking Adrian Peterson on the field. Yeah, but there's too many other people on no, that I know, fucking I know. team. The only thing I'm hoping for is like Noah Fant gets hurt and Albert O goes in there and shows really good chemistry with Drew. Like John Elway said, he called Drew Locke before yeah. they made the pick to make sure that he's like okay with him. You know, if they didn't like fuck each other's girlfriends in college or anything, he said yeah. give him the go, give him the give him the run, well, and uh, let's call my quarterback for next year but the guy that will not be the quarterback in two maybe years albert o will see. be the quarterback just like Jawan jennings is going to be the niners quarterback maybe albert o get takes over as the broncos we were we were talking we were talking about um too many mouths to feed in denver like there's so many guys there and i love kj hamler as like a prospect like a talent and this the landing spot was was beyond shitty but that's kind of why i took him there maybe uh what do you think max do you think you think john elway trades him for like a Seventh no. round pick or something, he goes somewhere. The hell are you I mean, talking he was, about? He was the second what round. What the hell are you talking about? Why would he trade him for a seventh round pick when he just picked him in the second round? It was a joke. It was ridiculous. It was a joke. I like the Hamler pick though. I actually do. I think Hamler could low key be uh, can overtake Jerry Judy as the wide receiver Dude. three. Judy falls. I was trying to trade up with Snacks to get the three seven and the three eight so I could take Hamler and Jefferson back to back. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, you were being a son well, of a bitch. Best, well, whatever the case, the best the best pick of the fourth round was the last pick, so that's fine. Isaiah Hodgins? Yeah. Never heard of him. Because when he gets cut from Buffalo and gets a real opportunity somewhere, he's going to thrive. Sexy Pats, great draft, buddy. Great draft. Ridiculous. Okay, so we can all agree that the worst picks of the draft were everyone except mine. The best picks of the draft were mine and nobody else's. The steal of the draft... Hmm. It was Antonio Gandy Golden at the fucking four two? What a steal! What's the fucking? Okay, hold on, real real quick, real quick before before oh, animal. He's eats six another four, freakish <laughs> athlete. Can't great, speak at all. Great uh, hands. He's probably got the best hands in the draft. If, once super we underrated. Get, once we get through next year with Scott owning nine of like twelve picks, twenty twenty two is going to be fun again. Well, see, here's the thing. I was thinking about Scott. Scott's going to have a problem. Because he's gonna have to cut 
half his roster to yep. draft. I was thinking about that. He's got that. so many good players. What's he going to do? He's going to have to sell them for what? More picks? No. But he what he's going to do? Picks. What he's going to so do is no one take, to sell them to. No. What he's going to do is take his wide receiver seventeen, slap a second round pick on it, and upgrade to a wide Trade receiver twelve. Stun. Right. Exactly. And then we're all fucked. So fuck you, Scott. Yeah. Fuck you. I think Scott moving forward, but he's in the best position. Not well, even he uh, owns the draft. Not even close. Not well, until, not until he gets past everything. me in the playoffs. We say that because, I think we should say that because in previous episodes when we were in the startup, when we first did this, we were all shitting on him. These are bad trades. These are bad trades. Look at him now. Most I mean, improved player. You're trying to well, trade up. Show up trade, you're trying to then. trade up in the fourth round, and Scott owns everything. Yeah, but I didn't even have to trade up to get all my guys. I got all my guys that I would have wanted. You want to know why you didn't spots. have to trade up to get your guys? Because they all fucking blow. You you keep digging your own grave. Hey, animal. No. <laughs> I wish I won the championship last year. I would I would never shut the fuck up about it. I'm so mad I lost. But Scott, listen. Yeah, but you didn't fucking win, my well, man. Nick, Nick <laughs> you better come get Matt Ryan for me because. All right, the reigning, I'm gonna go the reigning champion. I'm going to go send some offers. All right, we suggest yeah, everybody out there, go log on to your Dynasty team and send offers. Before you, send offers. Before you do that, and then send nudes. But before you do that, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. This was. We should start doing the thumbs up at the beginning of videos, not to cut you off on your outro there, my man. We don't want to. We don't want to start the video off with a call to action. Then it just feels like yeah. we're just we're not. In, right. We don't love the audience, and we do love the audience, animal. I know you it's love. Like right before we get into it, like hey, we're about to get into this. Just give a thumbs up. Listen, there's no Thanks. value there. It. You're all about the money. You're you're a sellout. I'm guy drafts Van to... Jefferson once, and all he's all about the money. It's ridiculous. <laughs> That's his guy. <laughs> you didn't even have to trade up for. Second. Him. Second round draft capital and basically the fourth round. You're right. Come on. Animal, can't wait, to, can't wait for you to finish in 10th place this year. It's going to be a good show. Yeah, you, you know what, Animal? I, I do think that. I mean, I think that for myself too, but I think you're going to be like 7th or 8th seed for, for five, six years to come. I agree. You're stuck in purgatory. It's like your mustache that is stuck onto it. your lip. All right, that's it. <laughs> Love you, Scott. Love you, everybody in the Go Fade Me. Thank you, Scott. Animal, get the away from your camera, please. Nick, I, I think you should. I think you should trade for Matt Ryan. Dude, I need a quarterback. And I know you do. Like Animal is over here hoarding like okay quarterbacks have, that I'd be more I'm than not, happy to get. I'm not, hoard, I'm not hoarding Matt Ryan. I am. I, he is. He's up for grabs. Vatch. I didn't really think about him until Vatch DM'd me last night. So listen, let's be real here. I only have three quarterbacks. So fuck. Not like I. Um, yeah, but that's like I three more than I have. No, you have. It's like one. Well, the problem is you have one that's just useless, and you have another one that's useless, and the rest of them are all useless. Oh, and Max. Wait, you're record. This is being recorded, right? So Scott's going to see this. Fuck. Can't say it. Oh, you're trying to talk trade? I'm just letting you know. Me and Scott are in heavy negotiations right now. Don't trade with Scott. Why? Scott's no, like you, the only you, person I like to trade with. You Scott. No, his team's already too stacked, and he's got a billion picks. But he's got, he's right, he's got some picks that, that I got to take use. all of his picks then. Well, here's how I see it, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait. No, I'm not going to wait. We're going to have to talk tonight. Because... The frame, the fr I'm telling you right now, between me and Scott, the framework is there. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm we were very fake close. fucking blockbusters we've had in, in our chat. Every, I understand, every day, but every time, me, every time me and Scott get together, there's it's always a blockbuster. We'll see. Listen, I think uh, me and you were very close. So. We were very close. I just, I, you're, you know. We can work. We'll figure something out. Okay. All right.